Hi creatives, greetings from my end, Chidi here and I hope you all are doing just great. On today's tutorial, I will be sharing with you how I put this beautiful luxury blouse together. Every process I took to bring it to the state that you can see in this video, that is what I shared in this tutorial. If it sounds like what you will be interested in knowing how I did it, then you have to stick around till the end to see every bit of the process I took to make this lovely blouse. And do not fail to subscribe and turn on your notification bell for beautiful tutorials that will be following this one. So here you can see the pattern pieces. In the last tutorial, we cut all this, okay? And here I have, I'm just trying to arrange it so that you understand what the pieces is all about, okay? This is the front part and the one I have by the side is the back. See the wording I'll be applying on the cups there? That is the light wording and then the thicker one that is called MH. For the back pattern, I'll stitch the dart first, then I'll place the fabric on it. Now, this is the back pattern. I stitched the dart on the duchess and I placed the fabric on it. And now this is the front. I've placed the fabric on all of it and yeah, stitched it together. I've also gone ahead to cut the linings of each and every one of them. You can see what I have here. These are the three cups now. I have two lower ones here and the upper one, just as you can see in this video. This is the three cup that we made from the last tutorial. I also cut the lining. If you watch this very well, you will see that the lining has wording, the thicker type that is called the MH. That is what I used and I did not allow it to get to the seam allowance. Did you see that? I did not allow it to get to the seam allowance. The same with the one I applied on the fabric. Here I've gone ahead to stitch the lining pieces together for the lower part of the front. And these are the cups. I have also stitched the two lower ones together and I'll be matching the notch to the joining part of the two lower ones. I hope you understand. Now this is the lining fabric of the front and I've gone ahead to stitch every part of the three cups and this is what I have. Okay? Now, how we go ahead and stitch these together? I've stitched it together here, and the next thing I'm going to do is to put my yoke to the fabric. I'll be applying my yoke and then be turning it with the lining. The yoke of the front is what you have to pay very attention to, and that is why I made a, a, a video that you may call I mean, In fact, I did not cut any parts of that video so that you will see every bit of the process i used to join this deep sweetheart yoke okay i will also go ahead to join the yoke of the back and turn it with the lining as well now this is the front as you can see and i will go ahead to join my yoke to it This is the front and that is the front yoke. I'll just hold it down on the sewing machine. Look how I placed it. I left like half inch on that sharp edge and I am beginning to stitch it. If you want, you can use something like office pin or even your needle, the needle of your machine to locate, you know, that you have to just leave like five inches, you know, I mean, sorry, half inch from that sharp edge. That is just what I did. Just watch closely, you see what I did. And I've stitched it down. Now I'm notching that sharp yoke point. I'm notching it. That is how you're going to do yours. Also notch the middle of that sweetheart neck on the fabric. I didn't show it in this video, but it is notched, okay? Notch the sharp point and notch the sweetheart neck. This will make the fabric to just open up and relax well for you it's not the easiest thing to do but it is very very possible all right now i'm going ahead to stitch it down having stitched it down this is what i have and i'm going ahead to stitch it properly and you can see what i have looking very beautiful and lovely don't mind that little wrinkle by the center by the time the client my client wears it everything will relax okay so now I'm going ahead to also stitch the lining piece, lining to the main fabric. I'm using the lining to 
you know, turn it up and cover the rough edge. Here you have to be very careful, Move, taking it a step at a time. You have to be really, really careful so that you don't stitch, um, stitch in the two or the net. You have to take it slowly, watching under to be sure that no part of the two net is entering the seam. So having done that, this is what I have. Sorry, it's not showing in this video. I did notice and I am notching again the middle of the lining piece. Okay. That is the middle of the sweetheart neck so that it will open up properly as I stitch the second part of the, the second side of this um, neckline, sweetheart neckline. Stitch carefully and watch underneath to be sure that the two net did not enter the seam. Very, very important. Because if it enters, it's going to misshape the two net, the yoke. Yeah. Now I've done that. I've stitched the end and I'm just notching the whole of the neckline. After notching, the next thing I did was to stop stitch. So you have to top stitch on the lining piece. The lining part of this, you have to top stitch very close to the former stitch. Okay, and this is what I have after top stitching. You can see how neat and lovely it's looking. Now, this is how to join your sweetheart neck. Okay, maybe I will make a video also to show specifically how to join even deeper sweetheart neck, you know, when a two net or something like this is involved. Now, I'm going to close up the sides of this blouse and i'm going to stitch it fabric to fabric and lining to lining that is what i'm going to do because i want every seam to be inside now i've done just that stitch fabric to fabric and lining to lining and i will go ahead to join the shoulder of the two appropriately i'll join it and then face the next step which will be to put the sleeve here I've joined it and I've also added the zipper to the back and this is what I have. You can see how lovely the dress is looking already. You can see the drop shoulder effect is already on the tool and this is how you're going to do yours. Just this. It's as simple as that. I will be deconstructing this. Okay. The next I did was to deconstruct this lace to be able to use it and place on my blouse. Now, this is how you're going to deconstruct it. I can't use um, soldering iron on this because the design is quite close. It will not really work really nicely. The, I just used my scissors. And while cutting, I was careful not to touch. I was careful not to touch any thread so that it does not rip or, you know, loose from there. This is what you do carefully and slowly. It requires a lot of patience. Don't do it in a hurry. Now, this is the step I took to deconstruct the whole of this, you know, designs or applique on this luxury fabric. Watch closely what I'm doing. I'm taking care to cut in between the nets so that the design will come out very well. Watch how I'm putting my hand to cut through the neck inside i cut it in i come out wherever possible so that the design will come out really nicely you see how i cut in there moving in as much as possible to release the design very very well okay this is how you're going to trim yours if not the applique is not going to look neat and nice so you're going to take care in cutting this through and ensuring that you trim out the net as much as possible where possible. I hope you understand. To expose the design in its real form. The thing is, you can even use soldering iron, you know, within the applique to remove any net that may be between, you can take that extra mile to do that. Just to release the design the way it is supposed to be. I hope you understand. So that is exactly what I am doing here. 
just taking care to cut out the applique. I did not cut this short so that you will see as much as possible the process I took to cut out the applique. You can see how careful I am with it. You can see how I'm taking care to cut out as much, you know, white net as I can to release the design. And this requires maximum patience. So this is what I have. And yes, you go on and cut every bit of it and then use it to design the blouse as much as possible and where it will look really beautiful. When you have deconstructed this applique nicely, as much as you want, it is very important to more like place it on the dress first and have a view of what it looks like before you go ahead to tack. Place your designs and look at it, see if it is what you like, and then you go ahead and stitch it, okay? That is the right way to do this. Now you can see how I have placed my design, the one I cut out on this. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut every bit, I'm going to deconstruct every bit of this um, luxury fabric to get as much designs as possible in designing this blouse. And this is the extent I've gotten to so far using the deconstructed designs. You can see the drop shoulder. Right now, I want to put the sleeve and also the structured detail if you want to see the whole process of making the structured detail i'm going to link it up in the description box that is if you have not seen it so that you will know how this structured detail is made i did not put all in one video because it will be too long now this is the blouse and i will go ahead now to cut the sleeve of this blouse you know that this um top is a drop shoulder there is a special way of cutting the sleeve for a drop shoulder the shoulder is dropped by about two, three quarter inches and I, I'm going to be using this measurement or this value while um, modifying the sleeve that I'm about to cut right now. Now I'm about folding the net fabric. This is two fabric. It stretches on one side. And does not stretch on the other side now the part that stretches is the part that is going to be you know lying horizontally along the sleeve okay this way it doesn't stretch okay along the sleeve it doesn't stretch but sideways it does now this is more like my stopper for the sleeve okay my master pattern and i am using it to cut out the sleeves now the very first thing to do is to cut out your basic sleeve i always say that i use the back pattern to make my basic sleeve and after that i will trim the front when i am fixing the sleeve i also have a tutorial on how to make a basic sleeve okay here is the back pattern of the sleeve and that is what i am using i just added extra length because i want this you know, long sleeve blouse to, the, to be a little extra in length, more than usual, okay? Now I just measured the around hand and I will be connecting it to the biceps, which is the fattest part of the arm, okay? Now this is just it. I connected it to the biceps and I will be cutting and leaving half inch for joining this sleeve. Now this is what I have and that is the, you know, cap of the sleeve. Now I've dropped this by two, three quarter inches. I hope you understand. And watch how I smoothened it to the, smoothened this two, three quarter towards the joining part of the sleeve. And that is just that. Now this is how you modify your drop shoulder based on how many inches you dropped the shoulder. Okay. Now I'm going to fix the sleeve because right now it doesn't matter where the front or the back is. We have virtually trimmed out you know the part that makes the difference between the front and the back sleeve i hope you understand so right now i'm going to join my sleeve i've joined my sleeve and i'm trimming off any excess you have to leave very tiny allowance on this hem joining of the sleeve very tiny allowance in fact one over eight or a little 
more than one over eight but not even up to quarter inch okay now after that i'm going to iron it out appropriately and you can see how neat is looking i'll stitch around it that i have done right now and i will just go ahead and close up the sleeve See how neat this sleeve is looking. Ensure your own is as neat as this. I deconstructed part of this applique and I'll be putting it on the sleeve. At this stage, I didn't know how much I will have of the applique to use and design the sleeve. But I just applied this and I will stitch it down. I just ensure this at the middle. I want to place it at the middle. That is why I measured that. I just located the middle of that sleeve and I will be pinning it down and then tacking it down with my needle and thread. So that is the same thing that I would do for the second sleeve. Locate the middle and then place the deconstructed applique on it and go ahead and pin it down. I'm just ensuring they are at the same position. Those are the measurements I'm taking. It's very important to take your measurements seriously so that your Cloth will come out neat and very professional. Now, this is what I did. I pinned it down and I'm going ahead to tack it down with needle and thread. Watch closely to see how I am tacking it down. So that is just it. You go ahead and tack yours down just like so, ensuring you are using the matching thread. This one, I used a thread that matches with the nude because it's very close to the gold on this deconstructed applique, okay? But while placing on the white part, the body of the blouse, I think I used white. But you can also use the nude or the gold, but just ensure that you are tacking it where it rhymes with the color of the thread. That is just it. So that nobody will look it, look at it and be seeing different in colors of thread. Nobody will even notice. Just as you can see, you can't even, you know, place the color of the thread I use. You can't even see the thread. So that is how careful you should be while tacking all this applique. Now, this is how I took my time to tack every bit of it in place. Be patient while doing this. It takes time, yes, but... When you do it thoroughly, you'll be happy with the finished job. Take your time and tack every side, including the middle of this applique, so that it will look neat, like you used, you know, like everywhere is gummed to the body of where it is tacked. Don't use glue. Glue is not the best. If you've not subscribed to my channel, guys, Go ahead and do that because you're not going to regret it. Turn on your notification bell so that you will be the first to know each time I upload my lovely videos. I can assure you that it will be worth it. You can see what I have here. I will go ahead and close up the sleeve, but I will not close it up completely because I was, you know, hoping that I could apply more applique to it. At this stage, I didn't know how much I could have extra after putting all the appliques. So I just left the entrance, the beginning of that sleeve, towards the hem open, just in case I need to tack more. Now, this is how I join the sleeve. And I'll be applying the applique on the joining line of the sleeve and the, you know, drop shoulder. Now, this is the back. I'll also be applying some applique to the back. This is the open side of the sleeve as well. So this is what I have, basically. And this is the structure detail that I made for designing this blouse. I said I'll link up in the description box, just in case you've not seen it, so that you can see how I made this structured detail, all right? I will be embellishing it and then I'll go ahead to tack it on the blouse. Everything is explained in that video, okay? So now this is what I have and I will be deconstructing this completely to use and design that um, structured detail. Now this is how you take time to also trim out the applique. I'm not going to show every part 
of doing this because every detail of it is in the video that I will be linking up in the description box. Just go see it and you will thank me later. So I just deconstructed it and I used it to design this um, structured detail. Okay, go ahead and do yours same way. So here you can see that I have deconstructed it and I have arranged it just the way I want it. You can see how beautiful it's looking. You can see. Now I'm just going ahead to pin it down in place and of course stitch it down with needle and thread. That is just it. All these are explained in detail in the video I'll be linking up in the description box. Just in case you want to know how I made this structured detail. Every bit of it is in that video. Watch it and thank me later. Now I will now go ahead and, you know, stitch down this applique to the detail, the structured detail. And sure not to use glue. Glue can disappoint. It can be messy. It's, yes, that can take time, but it's definitely the best way to apply your applique or details to clothing. Don't use gum. They are not durable. Now I took my time to tack this in place. As I'm tacking, I'm ensuring that it's not moving. I'm ensuring that it is really tacked very nicely. Ensure you do yours also like that. Now this is how you're going to tack it all through and yeah. I also did the second one. I just did a line of the structured detail on the second one. Now I'll be joining it together just as you can see me do. I also joined the second part and then I fixed it to the dress. This is me just ensuring that the detail came out exactly the way it is supposed to be. And then I tacked it down. That is just it. Tack it thoroughly like this and then after tacking it really nicely, I used, you know, the same needle and thread to still tack it on the blouse. And that was it. I tacked it. Even the two, you know, details, I have to hold them towards the middle and still tack tacked it together so that it doesn't move. I tacked the two of them together, I positioned it the way I want and tacked the two details together and then tacked it to the blouse. Now this is how I tacked it and I also applied applique on that point that I tacked it to the front and to the back. I brought a piece of the applique and you know attached it to this point. And that is it. I tacked to the back the same way I did with the front and I used applique to cover the rough edge. That is just it. And after doing that, this is the... After tacking it, this is what I have. I just went ahead to cover the rough edge with applique and also covered applique along that joining part of the drop shoulder and the sleeve. This is how beautiful the blouse was looking at the stage. I just used applique to cover the rough edge of that spot and I pinned it down. I will also be using hand and, you know, hand needle and thread to tack it down. I did the same for the back, tack it down, use applique to cover it and also tack it down. So that is how I achieved this lovely brow blouse. Okay, the cup is made with wadding and you saw how I joined the deep neckline and also the drop shoulder. Okay, those are the main details of this, how I applied the applique and the rest. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Do well to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Join the family and you will not regret it. Also turn on your notification bell so that you will be the first to know each time I upload my lovely videos. I can assure you, you will not regret it. 
Thank you all for always stopping by to watch my video. Welcome to my new subscribers and thanks also to all of you. I love you all and I will see you in my next one. Bye.